I send it to yes. Okay, start presenting. This is 38 year old male, Satyajit, farmer, residing at Delhi, came with okay. the yeah, one, one thing is that uh, don't, when you're presenting on an international forum, try not to use identifiers, okay? So the names and all should be deleted. That, that's all right, just telling you for your business. Yes. But carry on, yeah. Came with the complaints of fever for three days, malaise for three days, cup with zero sinus expectoration for two days, and bubbling of air through the chest drain for two days. Okay, stop. This doesn't make sense because fever for three days, malaise for three days, and where did the chest strain come in? Uh, sir, I included in a history of present illness. Yeah, yeah it's, it just doesn't make sense. The first four lines don't make sense. Okay, so you, you have to start with some sort of a, because where did the chest strain come from? The fever is for three days. Where did the chest strain come from? It's not making sense. Carry on. Uh, a patient, uh, patient was uh, all right 10 years back when he had a tuberculosis, which was treated with nine months of anti-tuberculous therapy, after which he had a repeated episodes of pneumonia and was investigated and found to have destruction of left upper part of his lung, for which he underwent chest surgery with removal of part of lung five days ago. And now on post-op day five, he developed fever, acute in onset, moderate, intermittent, without chills and rigor and relieved with antipyretic and are without night sweats. Stop, stop, stop. So now this is an operation happened only five days ago, isn't it? Yes, sir. So then, then you should be able to tell me whether he's had a thoracotomy or VATS and what is the lung resection inside. Because that should come in the history straight away because this is not an old operation 20 years ago. This is a uh, current operation. So you should be able to tell me uh, what is the... Sir, so, uh, open surgery. However, the details of surgery are not with the patient. Okay. Okay. All right. Carry on. But should you? Is it important to get the details of the surgery? Yes, sir. It is important to uh, get the details of the surgery. Uh, where, uh, I like to uh, what was done. Uh, what was done, and how, what was the condition of the um, brown? How will details of the surgery change your? Uh, uh, diagnosis or your management. What are the various surgeries he could have had? Uh, sir, he could, uh, he could have a, a lobectomy, uh -huh. or a wage resection, segmentectomy, uh -huh. uh, pneumonectomy. Yeah. So, or, depending on. Or what else? Third operation that he could have had. Another operation that he could have had. Decortication. Decortication. Okay. Yeah, because this is a tuberculosis case. You don't know that. So why does uh, this change? Uh, wh what is the difference between a wedge resection versus a lobectomy in terms of air leak? Uh, sir, in case of wedge resection, uh, the air leak is peripheral. Excellent. So peripheral Very air leak rather than a uh, pure bronchopleural fistula. So now my question is, what is the difference between air leak and bronchopleural fistula? Uh, sir, in air leak, a small amount of air is uh, is a leak from the, the from the lung surface, which is occur at which is at certain one point or multiple points, oh. and it either it could be a expiratory or inspiratory. Uh, what, what is what is a bronchopleural fistula? In bronchopleural fistula, large amount of air is escaped from, from the respiratory system. No, no, give me a definition. You're a thoracic surgeon, man. Give me a definition of what is a bronchopleural fistula. What do you understand anatomically by a bronchopleural fistula? And what do you understand anatomically by air leak? Are they different terminologies or are they the same terminology? They are different termino terminology. It's an alveolar, okay. the leak at the alveolar Good. side is a... So hmm. alveolar leak is what is called as what? Uh, it's, uh, alveolar air leak is called as... Uh, Good. Alveolar leak is called as what? Air leak. Air leak. Okay. Good. And what is a bronchopleural? Bronch uh, bronchopleural fistula is a leak from the... 
from uh, uh, main bronchus to the terminal bronchi. Yeah, yeah. So primary, secondary, tertiary bronchi. Yeah. Bronchi. So it's a communication between the primary, secondary, tertiary bronchi and what? What space? Plural space or exterior? Okay. If it's a plural space, what is it called as? Bronchoplural fistula. fistula. If it is exterior, what is called as? What is it called as? Mm. Bronchoplural fistula with. Um, what is the correct terminology for connection with the exterior? Anybody can take it, okay? Anybody else who can think of an answer can take the question. Microphones are off, so I can't hear you. Guys. Bronchocutaneous fistula. Bronchopleurocutaneous fistula. Bronchopleurocutaneous. Okay, now my next question to you is, uh, Nikhil, what is empyema necessitans? Uh, empyema necessitans is a... Uh, uh, plural space uh, with uh, with uh, chest wall involvement. So what is? Give me, give me some. Yeah, I, I understand what you're saying, but chest wall involvement meaning if the rib is eroded, that's an empyema necessitans. Uh, no, sir. Okay, and what is an empyema necessitans? It's a purse traversing from the intercostal spaces. Causing yeah. uh, bulging, bulging. Okay. So bronchopleurocutaneous fistula is a type of empyema necessitans? No, sir. Right. Then what is empyema necessitans? Anybody else wants to tell me what is empyema necessitans? Nikhil, first ball LBW. <laughs> You're presenting Blanco plural fistula to me. You have to know what is empyema necessitans. What is it? Somebody come on quickly. Communication with the chest wall or through the chest wall. So a Blanco plural cutaneous fistula is a type of empyema necessitans. Okay? Any yes, subcutaneous sir. collection from a plural Empyema is an empyema necessitans. necessitans. Okay. Yes, sir. Um, don't don't say that bronchopleural cutaneous fistula is not an empyema necessitans. So there are different terminologies you must know. The first one is alveolar leak, which is called as air leak. Standard most people describe it as air leak, but it is alveolar leak. The second is bronchopleural fistula, where the communication is between the bronchus and the pleural space. The bronchus can be primary, secondary, or tertiary bronchus. And the third is, is communication between bronchus, pleural space, and the skin, which is bronchopleurocutaneous fistula. And the fourth one is empyema necessitans, which is communication of an empyema across the chest wall, which could be just a subcutaneous collection, or it could also mean a sinus forming on the outside. These are mm -hmm. all definitions of empyema necessitans. Okay. Mm -hmm. What is yes. the significance of identifying the difference between these four structures, these four pathologies? Why do you need sir, to know the four pathologies differently? Uh, sir, the treatment will differ accordingly. Depend, uh, it will change. Good. Okay, so we'll talk about that in more details. All right, now get back to your patient and tell me, along with fever, he had malaise. Okay. Right. Malaise. Uh, he also complains of cough, uh, acute in onset, progressive, intermittent, associated with serosanguinous expectoration with pus, without hemoptysis, and is aggravated on right lateral position, and is decreased on left lateral position, and not relieved with cough syrup, bronchodilator, or antibiotics. Cough is associated with fever, but not with breathlessness, wheezing, regurgitation, post nasal drip, night sweat, and it is persistent at present. Carry on, carry on. Just carry on. I will stop you when I he, think it is right. He noticed bubbling of air through the chest tube and is more when he is inspiring. Okay, stop. Now, in so far, you have covered this history. You haven't told me anything about the chest tube. 
So what is the significance of the history of chest tube? Are you happy with this much detail about the chest tube? Uh, no, sir. Okay, need... so what more do you need to tell me? It's five days post-op. So what is the history? What are the details I'm looking for in the chest tube history? Is there anything more in the chest tube thing coming lower down? Nikhil, have you uh, written anything more about the chest tube lower down? No, sir. Okay, so now then your history is very much incomplete. Yes, sir. Because this is a very important history. So he just had surgery and he's at the chest tube. So tell me about the chest tube. What will you ask? Or what do you need to tell the examiner about the history of the chest tube? Uh, sir, amount of... Uh... Uh, drain. Before that, what do you want to tell me? Do you want to tell me number of drains or just single drain? Uh, I say number of drains. Yeah. And then what else you want to tell me about the drain? Is it apically yeah. placed or is it basally placed? Basically placed. Apically is, it well, is it well placed or is it not well placed? So the details of surgery is not so don't okay, but you have got a chest x-ray, no? So is it well-placed or not well-placed? Well-placed, sir. So you think it's a well-placed, basally single chest tube. Is that correct? That would be yes, very sir. unusual for a thoracotomy. Most people who do thoracotomies will actually place two tubes. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so now wh why do you think two tubes are placed? And what um, is the placement of the two tubes? So one is basally a, a, along the diaphragm and one is apically. Why do you place them separately, a basally and apical? What is for what? Uh, sir, apical for air and basal for fluid. Basal for? Fluid to drain. What type of fluid do you want to drain? One is plural fluid. What else do you want? Come on, you're the surgeon, no? Why have you placed the drain basally? What do you want to any, do? And any blood collection. Yeah, so plural fluid and blood collection yeah. is what you want to drain. No, blood is important. Yeah? Okay. Yes, sir. What else you want to know about the drain history? Your drain history is very much incomplete. What else do you the want to know about the drain history? Amount of drain. Amount of drainage. Very good. So you have to tell me amount of drainage over five days. Yeah? So you have to tell me whether it was very high first and then gradually reduced or it was not high and then increased. You have to tell me that. So... What is the history with this guy? Give me something. So initially serous and later on, uh, serous mixed with the altered, uh, slightly altered blood on day one, then mm. serous and then gradually it become, uh, <clears throat> uh, then air, air, air leak was present. And so, uh, No, 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 stop the air leak. First talk about this fluid that's coming. What are the important things in a history you need to know about fluid that's coming in a drain? One so is color. you told me the color, so I got that. Serous, um, blood, amount. or purulent. What else? Amount, very amount. important, amount. So what about the amount? So it's what gradually, is the of the amount? Initially, initially more than decrease, and now uh, the uh, now it started increasing. It's increasing. So give me some sort of a number for the amount. So in, in the history, you must always say that initially, post-operatively, he was draining about 250 to 300 ml. And it's gone down to 100 ml, but the color has changed to purulent. Something like mm -hmm. this. Do you know what yes. I mean? It's important to talk the language. Yeah? Yes, sir. Okay. What's the next thing about the history of chest drain that you need to tell me? Come on. Your case, man. You should be able to tell me what, what is the next thing about the history of the chest drain? Air leak. Okay. So yeah. air leak. What do you want to tell me about the air leak? Uh, whether it is a persistent intermittent mm. Mm, amount of air leak, mm. whether it is inspiratory, expiratory, mm. or, or at rest. Yeah. And what else? And at rest. Yeah, yeah. What else? Mm. Whether it has increased suddenly. Okay, that is a very important issue. Yeah. What does that suggest? When it has increased suddenly, what does that suggest? It suggests a dehiscence. Suggests a dehiscence. Okay, all right. Fine, I'll take that. 
What else about the chest drain do you need to tell me in the history? Anybody wants to tell me something else he has not told me? No, come on, sir, guys. I'd like to pass. Somebody else, please come in. Vikas, what else about the history of the chest drain is important in a case of bronchopleural fistula? Not bronchopleural fistula, but in a case which is getting infected. Vikas, anything is missing? Change Arif, in nature, is missing? Ch change in nature, I think he has said. He has said, yeah. What, what else is important for you to know in the history in a post-op patient? Do you want to know the type of bottle that's attached? Yes, sir. Why is that important? What are the types of attachments that can be done to the end of the drain? Uh, sir, under what, uh, all are underwater seal. Okay. And, uh, so what are you going to attach? What are the various types of attachments you can have? So single bottle. Single bottle, glass bottle. Okay. Glass what else? Bottle. Uh, a bag. Okay. Two, a uh, bag. Two what chamber else? with two chamber with suction two chamber okay so suction is also important you forgot to tell me so let's keep suction aside the question at the moment is what are the types of bottles so one is bag one is single chamber you said then two chamber what else tell me normal three, common three thing. chambers Are baba three chambers four chambers five chambers you can go on that way tell me the common bags that are attached to the chest tube because tell me the common bags that are attached one is a bag, one is a single glass bottle. What else is that as? Thompson drain system. Yeah, so Very it's bad. a drainage system. Any one of those atrium or anything else. What else? Digital commonest, suction device. Commonest bottle that is used is what? ICD bottle. Yeah, what is it called as? Which company makes it? Romson's. Romson's. Romson's ready vac. Okay. Ready vac. Yeah, Romson's ready. That's the commonest one used around the world, no? Yes. Okay, yes. and nowadays what is used? A digital suction device. Digital suction device. Okay, good. So now, what about suction now? Suction in this patient. Is, was suction applied, not applied? So not applied. Not applied. Okay, all right. But if suction was applied, then what do you look for? Uh, in the history, what will you tell me about suction? So the pressure of suction. So how much is the normal pressure most people will apply? Uh, sir, 15 millimeter of water. Or 10 to 20 uh, millimeters of water. Yeah, so what is the normal in, in KPA? 2 KPA. Minus, minus 2 KPA. Minus not plus 2. It's a minus 2 KPA. Minus 2 KPA. Okay, minus 2 suction is the standard one applied. So tell me about, uh, so he's had nothing applied. Nothing applied. Okay. What else in the history is important that you have to tell me in regards to the operation and the drain and all that? Sir, uh, I like to ask, uh, is any flap or any kind of injury performed? No, no, no. He's a post-op patient, no? Post-op patient who suddenly changed his drainage. So what else in the history do you want to know? In terms of any investigations, anything you want to look at, which chest you should tell me in the history? Chest X-ray. Okay, what in the chest X-ray you want to tell me? So the air fluid level and expansion yeah, so, of... So it is very important, no, that immediately post-operatively the chest, the lung had completely expanded. And four days later, it seems on the chest X-ray, the lung has collapsed and there's an air fluid level. See, this is how you talk in an adult way. You know, on a ward round, what do you tell me? In a history with somebody with a chest drain and this thing, you have to be able to reproduce it no? straight away. This is not about yes. writing down a detailed history. It's about being able to talk no. on a ward round how you would present the case to me. When I come on a ward round with you, what do I ask? I ask you these questions, no? Yes. How sir. much is the air leak? What is in the drain? Has the drainage changed? How has it changed? What is the x-ray? What was it before? What is it now? So you have to talk in the history in a way that you're talking at an adult level, this is a consultant level discussion that you have to have with me. Okay, it's not about writing all these things about things, but have an adult discussion with me. You haven't told me a lot of things 
about the operation. So you completely, there is no history of what has been done in the operation. Number two, more importantly, there is no history in the post-operative period, what has happened to the drain, how the drain has changed, and what has happened to the chest X-ray. Okay, very, very important. Your history is incomplete if you don't give me the picture. picture. Do you understand? Yes, sir. So carry on. So I, I'm not happy with he noticed air through the chest tube. Because are you telling me that he did not have air leak before and now he's got air leak? So after surgery, it was not there. and so There was no air leak after surgery. So why was the drain kept for four days? So the drain output... <laughs> yeah. See, initially, yeah, I mean, uh, in, you know, uh, you're not in, giving initially, me a correct history. That's what I'm trying to tell you, Nikhil. Okay. See, initially, the after surgery, there was some air leak, and okay. which has reduced, and then it then it suddenly increased. Yeah. So, so even if you're creating a history, I, I want you to create a realistic history. Yes, sir. You understand something that talks to me as a clinician. You know, I mean, this is there was air leak bubbling in the that is not. A realistic history. That's not what happens in patients, right? Yes, sir. Carry on. So he tell me about the pain that you're talking about. He complains of chest pain at operation site, dull aching, and aggravated on movement and reduces at rest with analgesic. Yeah. No history of postural change, diurnal variation, palpitation, profuse sweating, giddiness, or episode, uh, giddiness episode or swelling of feet or any history of trauma to the chest. Okay, just, 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 this is too much detail. Now tell me on the basis of your history, I don't want to know anything else. On the basis of your history, what are you dealing with? Uh, I'm dealing with a, in a, po a post-operative patient with a, a sudden onset air leak, with fever, with expectoration. Uh, I'm suspecting a, a communication between the bronchial tree with the pleural cavity. Okay, just stop one second. Nita has raised her hand. What do you want to ask? Me? I want to ask one thing that should we write the status of the patient like state, status post-surgery thoracotomy in the presenting complaint so that picture absolutely. will become more clear? Absolutely right. That's exactly what I want to know. You're absolutely right. I want to know all this picture. In the first line, you should tell me. He's a 36-year-old post-thoracotomy, having had a lobectomy, uh, three, four days ago. So this should all come. You see, he's written so many things in three paragraphs, but he's not told me the, the crux of the discussion. He's not told me what is happening with the chest drain, what was the chest drain, how many chest drains were there, what was the amount of fluid coming out, and how it changed. Because the history is not... Uh, this is not typically how you get a history in a patient who's getting BPF. Okay, so now my question to you, Nikhil, is... Tell me, so you think he's developing a bronchopleural fistula, is that correct? Yes, sir. Okay, so, but you don't even know whether he's had a lobectomy or not, okay? So we can't say yes, that he's developing a... Mm -hmm. So why do you think he's developing a bronchopleural fistula? Uh, sir, the... stum have given away, or... Uh, so he's post day five, okay, post-op day five. Why do you think stumps give way in post-op day two, three, four, five? So there are uh, pre-operative uh, pre uh, factors such as poor nutrition. No, no, then Nikhil, 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 just talk to uh, this yeah. patient. Straight away, tell me why do you think the stump has given way? Everything you said is right. I'm not discounting that. In this patient, tell me why the stump has given way post-operative day four or five. So the suture dehiscence. Why? So the necrosis of the stump. So do you think infection causes necrosis in three days? What is the commonest risk factor or what is the commonest reason why a stump will dehease in post-operative day two, three, four, five? So uh, pressure on the stump. 
you know, what is the commonest cause of the dehiscence? The reason, it's important you understand this, otherwise your treatment will change. What is the commonest cause of dehiscence in post-operative day two, three, four, five? So the Lack of vascularity. What is that called as? Avascularness so fast. It's, it's too fast. What is the commonest cause of dehiscence in the first three, four days? Sir, technical... Uh... Absolutely right. It's a mechanical oh, failure. It's a technical failure. Which means that either your staplers were not correctly applied or your sutures were not correctly applied and they are given through. Mm -hmm. You understand? Nita is absolutely right. It's a technical problem. It's a surgical problem, not an infection problem. Okay. When does infection cause dehiscence of the stump? The post of day, uh, after post of day 10. So At least two weeks, yeah? Two, two weeks, weeks later, if, it, if there is air leak, then that is infection. But in the first four or five days, if there is air leak, which has suddenly increased in size, then this is a technical failure. What is the importance of identifying that? Sir, uh, we have, uh, the management is immediate uh, opening and closing Absolutely of the- Absolutely right. The management becomes surgical. You have to go back in and sort it out. Okay, you have to go back in and so if it is infection and it is diseased because of infection, then you cannot go back in and sort it out straight away because the stump will be necrosed and even if you put sutures and things, it will not stay. You understand that? However, if yes. this is a mechanical failure, you have to go back in and immediately on table sort it out. Okay? Yes, sir. So how do you sort out a mechanical dehiscence of a stump? Uh, Tell sir, me the various strategies that you can have. Sir, uh, uh, taking him for the surgery. Just, just talk technically. You are there in theater. How will you sort out the stump? It is all in front of you. How do you sort out the stump? In uh, a mechanical failure. Sir, uh, Give me all the various ways you can do. Uh, sir, first way, uh, we'll see how much is the length available and uh, re refashioning the uh, refashioning the bronchial opening and re anastomos immediately. Uh, Not re anastomos, but closure. Closure. So where do you do the closure, you yes, said? Sir, sir uh, depending on the length available. Okay. So what do you do? Mm. Tell me technically what you do. You're on table. You've got you've got a bronchial stump which has opened up because your suture has cut through. So I'll see the uh, uh, edges and uh, refashion it and resuture it. So one is refashion, which means you cut the whole thing out and resuture it again. Okay, uh -huh. that's one. Or what else can or, you do? Or use a flap. Um, no, no. For first, tell me about the stump. Flap will come in a minute. So one is you've Recut it and resutured it. Mm -hmm. What do you use to suture the uh, bronchial stump? If the adequate length is the adequate length available, then uh, what material do you use to suture the stump? So proline. Oh come on. No, no, sorry, PDS. Proline. PDS. Yeah. What, what PDS? Nikhil, marega I will hit you if you say proline. Have you ever seen so me use PDS. proline on a stump? Right. No, probably. No, so PDS. I wanted to say PDS a bit of. So, what PDS? In PDS. the exam, you know, that is no, no excuse. So, just it has to come spontaneously. PDS. What number PDS? So, 3. What number PDS will you use to switch on this thumb? Anybody can tell me. I don't mind. Somebody come in and tell me. What three, number PDS do you use? 3-0 PDS on round body. 3-0 PDS. Yeah, on a curved body. Okay, good. Uh, what do you have to, when you put your knots, what do you have to make sure? Why do you use PDS versus proline? You can use proline. Some people use proline, but traditionally, why do you use PDS versus proline? And what do you have to be careful when you are putting in the knots? Channa Nikhil, give me some technical points here. Come on, start talking. Yeah. Sir, not feel. Uh, yeah, so knots are good with PDS. Very good. PDS. 
proline does not have, you know there is notting property not failure how do you overcome that if you are using proline Mm. Noting problems with proline. Sir, uh, last throw in reverse way. Before that, how many knots you throw in? Uh, sir, three. Hey, three. 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 Two oh, less. Proline. Are you mad? Three knots you throw on a proline. I'll kick you. You don't three throw three knots even on a PTS man. Minimum knots. How many knots do I want on a proline? Minimum. Minimum. Sorry, Nikhil. I'm stuck. Yeah, six. at least six. Seven to ten. Six. At Nine least six or more. Six. Okay. So that's number one. And then you throw a reverse knot at the end to, to lock the knot into place. Very good. Well done. Okay. Uh, so one, you said you will cut it and re-suture it. Okay. That's one way. What else can you do? It's a technical question, okay? It's nothing yes, out sir. of the ordinary. It's a very simple question. What else will you do? You got thrown away because my discussion has gone completely into management. Yes. But you should be ready to discuss this. Yes, sir. An exam. Mm, then flap, sir. Before flap, what else can you do, Baba? What are the other strategies for suturing or closing a bronchial stump? Using a stapler. Ah, thank you very much. Using a stapler. Well Stem. done. So, where do you apply the stapler? Um, so, the, uh, so, what are the types of staplers you will use on a bronchial stump? Uh, sir, uh, linear linear cutter, linear stapler. Okay, linear stapler. A right. in, a, in, a, in a thoracotomy, you can use a linear stapler. Linear. What else is available? Are there any specific staplers available for bronchial stump? Sir, endo stapler. Okay, what sort of endo stapler will you use for a bronchial stump? So, one point five mm, millimeter thickness. Okay. What is the color? Yeah. Tell me which company, what color? Simple question. Yes, I don't yeah. mind whichever company you use, but tell me the color. So, Covidian. Okay. Covidian, what you use? What color? I Yoda. It's a deep shit, man. Deep shit. Green. No. Okay, green. Green is not in Kavitia. Green is not a color available in Kavitia. Purple and uh, this thing. So, somebody else quickly come in and tell me what color stapler to use on the stump, bronchial stump. Anybody can come in. Green is available in which company's range? Ethicon. Hello? Ethicon has got green that is usually used for a bronchial stump. What is the depth of closure of a green stapler? One point five. I'll kill you. I will kill you personally. I spent three years teaching you this. Okay, every day I've taught yes, you sir. this. Somebody else, tell me what is the depth of closure of a green stapler? Nita, you can come in, I don't mind. Anybody, Arif, you can come in. No. Mohammed Lamar, you can come in, I don't mind if you tell me what is the depth of closure of a green stapler. Nobody knows, okay, come on. Now, switch on your microphones, everybody. And you have to say this after me, okay? Everybody switch on your microphone and say this after me. Ethicon. Ethicon. White. Ethicon. White. 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 One millimeter. One millimeter. millimeter. Pulmonary artery, pulmonary vein. Pulmonary, pulmonary artery, pulmonary, pulmonary vein. vein. Okay. Ethicon blue. Ethicon blue. Ethicon blue. 1.5 millimeters. 1.5 millimeters. millimeters. 
so it can be spontaneous or it can so be full good, good. Yeah. primary or secondary so, okay so it can be primary or secondary good what are the etiologies of bronchopleural fistula sir uh, pri a primary or a secondary or a, um, traumatic okay uh, so primary spontaneous pneumothorax okay. secondary secondary to uh, tuberculosis pneumonia uh, trauma uh, so, any intervention so if i ask you the question what are the etiology of bronchopleural fistula how would you tell me what is a good way to answer this question what are the risks for forming a bronchopleural fistula it can be pre operative intra op and post op post op okay that is how i want you to answer so pre op risk intra op risk and post op risk post this is how you have to answer this question yeah so tell me yes, some sir. pre operative risks uh, sir um, malnutrition yeah chronic, chronic disease yeah. patient medication yeah. like steroids yeah uh, diabetes mellitus yeah. uh, comorbidity uh, yeah. in uh, immunosuppression medication okay prior, uh, prior uh, chemotherapy good or radiation so any of these okay good well done so you know the pre operative risk factors well done what are the intra operative risk factors of a bronchopleural fistula everybody start Sorry. answering okay within yourself take this chance to come to practice even if your microphone is off just answer it so what are intra operative risks uh, sir blood loss Okay. Um, so in. Ah. Uh, Sir, tell me. It's a straightforward question, not complex. Just start answering. One, two, three, four, five. Something you tell me. So blood one, loss. you said blood loss. I agree with you. What else? Suturing technique. Suturing technique. Okay. What else? Ah, uh, um, covering of the flap. Covering of the stump. covering or not covering of the stump not covering of the stump yeah so what are the intraoperative risk factors what gives you higher chance of a bronchopleural fistula does the type of surgery matter yes sir and does the side of surgery matter yes sir so which is the commonest type of surgery and side of surgery which gives you a bronchopleural fistula right side surgery okay okay what long, else long, what are the other risk factors long bronchial stump see look look at the screen look at the screen okay so uh -huh. i'll i'll ask you why right pneumonectomy is more common that's okay so you said right pneumonectomy is possible what else completion of pneumonectomy yeah completion, completion pneumonectomy, pneumonectomy because you're going back a second time second time you're more likely to disrupt the vascularity and there's more likely chance of having infection what else devascularization mm -hmm. of the bronchus bronchus. your stapler, stapler can misfire mis your suture is not Stimulate. tied properly or not the correct stapler has not been used or there is cancer okay. at the bronchial site okay this is the answer nikhil so yes, when sir. i ask you the question what are the intraoperative risk factors for a bronchopleural fistula you should be able to come back with 1 2 3 4 5 mm. there is no two ways about it and it should come as fluently as this yes. so right pneumonectomy completion pneumonectomy mm -hmm. devascularization of the bronchus stapler misfire loss of suture integrity or presence of tumor at the bronchus i want you to practice it nikhil otherwise it will not yes, come sir. yeah everybody who is exam going should be able to tell me 1 2 3 4 5 6 there is this is not difficult don't use your own language i don't you know if you know this it will just fire straight away isn't it yes sir. Am, am i being awkward am i being difficult no sir tell me genuinely am i being difficult no, no sir. sir no sir yeah so this is straight forward no so just answer straight these are the ones that get to more marks these are this is a winner question if i ever ask you tell me intraoperative risk for bronchopleural fistula which means i want to give you five marks straight away so this one you cannot mark you know you cannot make a mistake in this one it should come 1 2 3 4 5 because you're a surgeon okay now tell me why right is more common than left Tell me why you think right is more common than left. Sir, the long bronchial stump, okay. long straight. Then yeah. uh, uh, finish answering, and then I'll show you. And the left left bronchus is behind the uh, aorta, yeah. so 
so bronchial stem uh, mm, is more exposed on right side compared to okay. the left. So bronchial stem is more exposed. There is a longer bronchial stem on the right side. Yeah. What else? And okay. there is a single arterial supply on the right side. Okay. What else? So there you are. You know, there's only a single arterial supply on the right side. The left has two bronchial arteries. On the right side, when you do mediastinal, you do a more detailed mediastinal nodal dissection because there is more ex exposure. So, so you are more likely to devascularize the stump because you are dissecting everything outside of that bronchial stump. On the left side, because it's very deeply placed, most people will not do a detailed lymph node dissection in the depths. You understand yeah. that? Because it's yes, in the aortopulmonary window, so people don't go so deep. So there is less chance that you will devascularize the left stump, okay? Mm -hmm. Then, uh, of course, you said it retracts behind the tissue. So there is aorta and more tissue to protect it. And the right always stays uncovered. Okay. okay. Well done. All right. What are other intraoperative risks? Quickly, anything else you can think of? Okay. These are the other intra. You told me about blood transfusion. You told me about the diameter, the length of the stump. You, to, uh, you didn't talk about mediastinal uh, lymphadenopathy. You must mention that. Okay. Okay. Well yes, done. Sir. So how do you avoid intraoperative risks? How do you avoid all these things? Uh, sir, adequate bronchial length, stump. Okay, good, one. Uh, if there is a doubt for uh, tumor uh, margin, send it for frozen section. And then what do you do? And then the refashion the margin if positive, positive. So you preferably want a negative margin. Okay, negative margin. Uh, avoid blood loss. If I ask you, when you put a stapler across the bronchial stump, okay, what should be the angulation of the stapler with relation to the bronchial stump? It should be the. Did you get my question? It should be the perpendicular. Okay, so it should be 90 degrees. Mm -hmm. If it is 45 degrees, what is the difference between an angulation of the stapler being 45 versus a stapler being 90 degrees? What is the difference? Explain to me the difference between a stapler being 45 degrees angulated versus a stapler being 90 degrees angulated. Sir, uh, the, nine, the 45 degrees, will give an oblique cut on the bronchus. So more... Okay, so what, what is the problem with an oblique cut on a bronchus? Uh, sir, it lead to stasis. And uh, stasis in a um, distal segment. Okay, all right. That's number and, one. What else? And, and one extra cartilage in a structure will get uh, no, uh, chop out with less okay. blood supply. Okay, and? What else? What are the other issues with a angulated or an oblique cut on a bronchus? Is everybody understanding my question? Say yes or no. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, yes, sir. Okay. So tell me. So uh, one is that you said there will be stasis at the distal end. I agree with you. You said that more than one cartilage will get cut horizontally, which is not a good idea. You want to have minimum number of cartilages in your stapler line. What else? Anything about length? Sir, in 45 degree more length will be preserved. Absolutely, the length of the stapler line is longer. longer. When you go 90 degrees, it's a transverse cut. The diameter mm -hmm. of that stapler length is shorter. Whereas if you go 45 degrees, you're going you know, at an oblique angle, it will be a longer bronchial stump. So there are more staplers fired in that area. Mm -hmm. And so there is more chance of dehiscence. Mm -hmm. Okay. And in terms of blood supply, can you explain to me anything about blood supply? It's around along the, um, sorry, in a bronch, uh, prime, uh, it's anteriorly and posteriorly. No, no, no. In, in, when you put an oblique cut on the bronchus, what is the problem with blood supply? Why does the distal end dehis? Because of the uh, uh, vascularity is compromised. 
yeah where is the vascularity compromised which end is the vascularity compromised proximal or medial distal? end medial end no not medial you have to say distal end okay distal. there is no medial or lateral so when you put it oblique what is close to the body will get good blood supply but what is far away from the body which is the distal end of that stump will get less blood supply and so there is more chance of the vascularity being compromised okay did you understand that so that's how you avoid intraoperative risk you have to make sure you handle the bronchus very very gently you have to avoid devascularization you must close the bronchus without tension if you're using sutures when you tie the knot you cannot make it too tight what happens when you make it too tight the necrosis so yeah what will happen with necrosis what will happen unknown color a giveaway of sutures yeah it will cut through okay so number one it will devascularize and it will cut through okay and then avoid excessive length all right okay good now other other strategies is you can reinforce the stump particularly in patients okay let me see when do you reinforce stumps tell me in your practice when you are intraoperatively operating when do you make a decision to put a muscle flap on the stump what conditions Okay, operating yes, on table, mm -hmm. you have reverse, you have redone the stump or whatever, or this is first time lobectomy you are doing, or pneumonectomy you are doing. You've cut the stump and you've stapled it. Why will you decide to put a muscle flap on that stump? What conditions will make you decide to put a muscle flap on the stump? Difficult question. Uh, no, sir. Okay, then tell me why you will decide to put a muscle flap on that stump. So first, uh, I'll have to. Um, I will put a muscle. No, no. The, uh, the question is why, in one patient you decide to put a muscle flap, and in another patient you don't decide to put a muscle flap. So why do you decide to put a muscle flap? Sir, um, associated surrounding infection in an infectious case, like okay, maybe the... infection. Yeah, more common. Tell me common things. You no, know? in your clinical practice, in infection you don't do. lung resection man post chemotherapy okay. post radiotherapy yeah. good post chemotherapy whenever one. whenever we do a right pneumonectomy we have to put flap you don't have to but it's preferable to put a flap preferable right. to put if a flap if it's a standard stand alone clean right pneumonectomy for lung cancer you don't have to put a stump but if yeah. you have got any comorbidities then you have to put a stump a stump any redo we else? have to do any redo yeah, redo yeah good in a redo i would put a stump i would put a muscle flap what else Chemo and radiotherapy. Oh, chemo, radio. He said. Immuno, immuno compromise. Immuno compromise. Immuno suppressed and immuno suppressed patients. Ah, uh, what patients in your clinical practice are immuno suppressed? Uh, diabetes. Examples. Diabetes mellitus. Ah, uh, yeah, diabetes. Yes, they are immuno suppressed, but you don't put post, some uh, muscle. Post transplant. Post transplant. Post transplant. Yeah, the commonest is post transplant. And what else? Connective tissue disorder patients. Connective tissue disorder patients are not. immuno compromise unless they are on long term steroids and things like that okay all right what else what other clinical condition that you may face as a thoracic surgeon what is the commonest virus which causes immuno compromise hiv 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 so in an aids patient you will try to put a bronchial muscle flap on a bronchial stump okay what other clinical conditions will you put a uh, muscle flap come on guys quickly residual endobronchitis Huh? residual infection circumferential dissection no, we said that we said that infections what else whenever we are in doubt we have dissection. to whenever we have infection, infection particularly tuberculosis tuberculosis uh, in tuberculosis which type of tuberculosis do you want to put stumps multi drug resistance or extremely drug resistant okay and in terms of anatomical location of tuberculosis when do you always want to put a stump a muscle on the stump endobronchitis when the bronchial endobronchial tuberculosis mm -hmm. you are absolutely right whenever you have a patient with evidence of endobronchial tuberculosis endobronchial strictures patient on uh, of mdr tb patient of xdr tb uh, you always want to put a muscle flap okay on table does that make sense yes sir so yes. patient with chemotherapy is staplers is this thing a uh, patient who has <coughs> done lvrs With associated emphysema, you might put in stumps. Okay, all right. So, what are the post-operative risk factors for developing a blowout of the stump? 
पॉजिटिव प्रेशर वेंटिलेशन व्हिच इज व्हाट व्हाट डू यू मीन एक्सेसिव इंट्राथोरेक्स एक्सेसिव इंट्रा एयरवे प्रेशर बिकॉज़ या सो व्हाट व्हाट आर दोस कंडीशंस व्हाट डू यू मीन बाय पॉजिटिव प्रेशर वेंटिलेशन the intra the intra airway pressure exceeds greater than 15 mm no no no, no. I, i understand that i am saying clinically what patients will have positive pressure ventilation copd are clinically your patient is uh, coughing a patient who coughs so one is coughing more common more common i want the commonest bagging. that is there post bagging patients who have not structure. more common than bagging smoker ventilated patients ventilated patients yeah. yeah. when the patient goes to the icu on a ventilator i am always worried about the stump blowing out because the ventilator blows the pressure across the stump no so when this is the commonest that is why in thoracic surgery we always extubate the patient on table for this reason we don't want a patient to go on a ventilator because that will blow the stump out what else causes positive pressure ventilation in thoracic surgery patients one is ventilated patient second is what else commonly in clinical practice coughing spirometry incentive spirometry spirometry but which spirometry which which incentive spirometry, spirometry. no more incentive spirometry cannot develop that much pressure what is the one that you use in the ward when patient is slightly short of breath little bit of oxygen a capella a capella jo use karte no what is it called as yeah cpap Okay, CPAP. <coughs> When you put a patient on CPAP, it causes positive pressure ventilation. You are actually increasing the uh, endobronchial pressure, and that can lead to a blowout of the stump. Is it? Does it make sense? Those are the two commonest things. One is ventilation, and one is CPAP. You know, mechanical devices that you use for improving. Uh, others are, of course, infection and you know, overloading the chest and prolonged use of chest pain, and of course, blood transfusion. Don't forget blood transfusion. Okay. there is some papers which have looked at association of blood transfusion and uh, post operative uh, blow out of stump yeah okay so acute within 4 days chronic within 14 days this is the definition acute is always surgical as neeta rightly pointed out acute means breakdown of the technique of technique. this thing everything else after 2 weeks is chronic that is other problem okay so patient will present with fever coughing subcutaneous emphysema tension pneumothorax sometimes or prolonged diarrhea mm. okay is this clear yes, how sir. do you now we come to back to your patient how do you investigate a patient with suspected bronchopleural fistula uh, sir chest x ray uh, okay. shows pneumothorax and uh, air fluid level and subcutaneous emphysema uh now just talk about the investigation so i'll i'll go into details about each one in a bit just tell me how you investigate this guy chest x ray ct scan oh. uh, and uh, bronchoscopy anything else you want to do for this guy what is your first thing that you do to the cultures guy? you order cultures. chest routine so <coughs> total count total count yeah first the... you do a full cbc no you do a CBC full cbc to see for evidence of uh, mm-hmm. raised white cells no mm-hmm. yes sir so i feel like killing you guys huh? so chest x ray ct scan bronchoscopy is fine but in a clinical practice the first investigation is blood test routine blood test to look blood for test. evidence of infection okay and then cultures and everything else you will do all right so now let's see this describe this chest x ray to me Can you see the X-ray? Yes, sir. Okay. Now I want you to describe this X-ray. Sir, uh, this is a ch- uh, chest X-ray PA view showing uh, left uh, n- left pneumothorax uh, with plu- pleural effusion uh, and. Um, uh, the trachea is deviated towards the left side tell me when you are finished and you are happy the right side is normal 
However, the right pro, um, pulmonary um, marking are well are prominent. Pulmonary artery marking are well prominent. Are you finished? Hmm. Yes, sir. This X-ray will one hundred percent be put to you in the exam. Okay, somebody else take it. And there are stapler line. Uh, there are some uh, stapler seam. In the left pleural cavity. Okay. Where is that? Sir, near the hilum. <clears throat> so what's happening? See, trachea is deviated to the left side. Left side. There are some stapler seen at the hilum of the left side. Same. There is multiple opacity seen on the left side with an air fluid level. Mm -hmm. What is this chest x ray? Post pneumonectomy. Post Thank you pneumonectomy. very much. Post pneumonectomy. <laughs> yeah, what is scaring you to commit yourself to a post pneumonectomy chest x ray? Nikhil, yes, why did you not tell me first go that this is a post pneumonectomy chest x ray? You understand? Why are you scared? Yes, this is a thoracic surgery exam, man. What is yes, the commonest sir. x ray you will see? It's a post pneumonectomy chest x ray. You cannot see any lung on the left side. You can see that the trachea is deviated to the left side. You can see evidence of surgery. There's a cutoff of the left main bronchus, if you look carefully. And yes, there are multiple loculated pockets on the left side. So what do you think this x-ray is? Post-pneumonectomy. Post so why don't you say that? Okay, what is the day? What else? What are you worried about this chest x-ray? What should you see in a normal post-pneumonectomy chest x-ray? And why is this a worry? Is this a worry? Is this chest x-ray a problem? Yes, sir. Air Why is it a problem? Air fluid level. Number one is air fluid level. Number two, what else is a problem with this chest x-ray? Not just air fluid levels, but there are multiple air fluid levels. Multiple air. Local what does that signify? Multiple air fluid levels signifies what? Mixture of air and fluid multiple, in multiple levels. Yeah, yeah, but what does it signify? What's the word? That I'm looking multi loculated collection. Loculations. Yeah, it signifies multi loculated collection <laughs> in the left chest. And what should you see in a post pneumonectomy x ray? Should you see air? There should be one. No air should be. Single, there should be one level. level. There should be a single air fluid level. level. Okay? And which changes every day because fluid is collecting on the left side. What is. So if I give you a post-pneumonectomy chest x-ray and tell you, ask you the question, when will you suspect a bronchopleural fistula on a chest x-ray? Tell me the findings of a normal post-pneumonectomy chest x-ray and when you suspect a so, fistula formation. So there is a uh, drop in the air fluid level. So first normal is what? Single level, air fluid level. level. And how does that change over a period of time? How does the fluid collect over a period of time? So, Slowly it rises, the yeah, yeah, opacity. What is, what is, what is, what do you mean? What do you say? In an exam, what do you say? Contraction of the... One space at a time. Okay, one intercostal space every two to three days or in fact every day. Okay, that is a normal rise. Fluid rising, mm -hmm. one intercostal space. Next day you do, it will be slightly higher. Next day you do, it will be... So one intercostal space at a time, it rises, okay? So... If day one of your post pneumonectomy the fluid level has risen very sharply, what does that indicate? Um, a blood loss. Bleeding. Bleeding. It indicates bleeding. What do you have to do in that situation? Insert an intercostal pain. You have to take back for surgery. You have to take the guy back to oh. theater, man. Yes, Where does a bleeding happen in, in a post pneumonectomy space? There should not be, huh? There should be no bleeding. If there is bleeding, there is no other answer except to open the chest. It is. If you put in an ICD, the guy will die. Uh. All right. The guy will die straight away. On you, he will die because he will exsanguinate. So if you see a sudden whiteout on a post pneumonectomy space, there is no other investigation needed. You just need to go to theater, full stop, and reopen the chest. Yeah? Okay. 
what else will tell you that there is a fistula forming tell me other things so drop in the air fluid level drop in the air fluid level very yeah, compared to previous x ray excellent that is very good that that means that something is opening up and it's what else will tell you that there is a, a bronchopleural fistula forming subcutaneous air okay subcutaneous air yeah yeah okay yeah surgical emphysema all right i mean what subcutaneous else? and uh, okay, what else Mm. What else will tell you there is a bronchopleural fistula forming? Uh, so, uh, 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 patient will coughing, cough a lot of blood. coughing, coughing out of uh, patient is coughing. Clinically, patient is coughing. Okay. Mm -hmm. What else on a chest X-ray will tell you that something is not right? Depression of the level of diaphragm. Okay, fine. I accept that. What else will tell you? That there is something is not right in this patient. Uh, increase in the intercostal deviation of, spaces. Deviation of the trachea. Trachea. To the other side, okay. Yeah. So there is airspace. So retention is developing. Okay. What else? <laughs> I'm not going to leave you till you answer me that all the points. Opposite lung. Ah, thank you very much. God bless you, Sarif. Opposite mm -hmm. lung. You have to look at the opposite lung. And development of opacities or any pathology on the opposite lung is always an indicator that the problem is on the other side. Do you understand that, Nikhil? Yes or no? Yes, sir. Yeah, yes, so sir. Always the opposite lung is a very good indicator that there is a problem on the pneumonectomy side. Okay? So many questions on just one chest X-ray. This is the most important chest X-ray, Nikhil. And you yes, must sir. practice it. You must practice it. There are at least 100 questions I can ask you just on this test section. And you can crack the exam. You can pass the whole exam purely on the basis of one chest section. Okay. okay, I really mean it. I'm very serious. So you better yes, write sir. down all these things that I told you. And you better practice saying it in the exam. There should be no hesitation whatsoever. Okay, sorry, one second. Hi, Malik. Assalamualaikum. Yeah, I'm, I'm actually on an online lecture. Can I just call you back? Okay. No thanks, thanks. Okay, thanks. Bye bye. bye. Waalaikum salam. Okay. Next. Who wants to take this? Somebody take this. Somebody else, not Nikhil, but somebody else take this. Try to do it. Ah, okay, Arif, you do it. This is, a, this is the lung window of a uh, CT thorax. Uh, showing a left-sided uh, uh, left-sided air uh, air pocket with uh, oh, use the use the correct word, Arif. Arif, Arif. Multi-loculated collection. Yeah. Multi is it multi-loculation? Good. Yes, sir. I can. There is a septa in in between. Yeah. So uh, multi-loculation. Use that word. It's a good word. Yeah. What else? Multi-loculation and uh, uh, there is. The opposite uh, lung uh, appears. Uh, there is a compensatory hypertrophy of the opposite lung, and uh, the I can see the left bronchus also uh, with a discontinuity. What else? There is an air fluid level on the left side. What else? Uh, not very conspicuous. The the right bronchus uh, this is below carinal level. The right bronchus is intact, and the left bronchus. So tell me just the pathologies that you can see. Everything you said, I agree with you. There are two or three important things which you missed out. I want you to tell me. Media channel shifting. Okay. What else? Anybody else wants to tell me what is missed out? The multiple opacities in the right side. Right. Yeah, the opacity. You you went beautifully to the right side. I was so happy. But you spoke about uh, compensation on the right side. But what you did not tell me is the opacification of the right lung. Can you see that? Multiple opacities. You know? This is a patchy infiltration. This is a giveaway. No. This is a clear-cut giveaway that something from here is coming to this side. Yeah? Okay. Okay, what else? What is all this? Can you see something here? Um, yes, 
Staplers. Stapler lines, no? Talk about stapler, stapler lines. lines. You can see, you can see staplers in this area. Yeah, there's some foreign body in that area. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And, and a so contracted left. Contracted left hemithorax. Mm. Yeah, but usually it doesn't happen that fast. This is probably a chronic uh, bronchitis. Okay. All right. Good. Uh, this is fine. This is fine. Somebody describe this quickly to me. Uh, so this is the um, mediastinal window of a chest uh, of a chest CT showing the contracted leg left hemithorax uh, with, uh, mm, uh, with compre compressed lung and uh, and thickened pleura with crowded ribs. Uh, very with, good, well done. I'm very happy. Uh, you said crowded ribs. Okay, that is very important. You said pleura is thickened. Very good. What else can you see here? Entrap lung. Entrap lung. Okay. What else is this? What is this? Calcification. Calcification. Calcified. Calcified There's evidence of calcification. So what do you think this is? So this is Acute empyema. Chronic. chronic empyema. Chronic empyema. Chronic empyema. Chronic empyema. Chronic empyema. Yeah. Okay. Good. <laughs> so if if I put this in front of you, okay, I I take you on a ward round. The patient is lying there, and this is what you can see. Talk. Short case in an exam. Because you want to take it, this is an FRCS exam case. Short case in an FRCS exam. Sir, this seems to be a post-op uh, three-port wax. No, no, because, because he's taking it, Arif, just for me. It's a long, it, that's a long scar, right, sir? It cannot be. Can you see it or you can't see it? Is the picture clear? I can yes, sir, it is clear, but... I can see three spots. So, I took three. you on a ward round, Vikas. Yes, sir. The patient is lying on his side. I took his shirt off and I said, talk. So, there is, there is an obvious visible scar. There are three three stab uh, like scars which appear to be. But I can see there's a big scar of thoracic trachotomy also, sir, most probably. Because this is your case, you talk. You have five minutes to talk and talk quickly. So, we can see the three prominent scars in the on the lateral aspect of the chest. Uh, in uh, most probably if whatever space I'll have to count, sir. And uh, skin around the scar is excreted. There's probably one uh, sinus, the upper one, probably it's a sinus, sir, open sinus. Is it the upper one or the lower one? The head is this. The, the, the head upper, is this the anterior this is one. Head, and this is abdomen. So now what you said. Yeah, this the, is head, this is abdomen, yeah. this is the umbilicus. Yes. The anterior one, the anterior most one, the one which is lowest. Okay. What else? You have five minutes to talk, Vikas. Talk, talk me through this. I have to check whether mentioned. movement movement on the chest or uh, ch chest is decreased or not. Uh, I I have only time to inspect, right, sir? Yeah, yeah. Only inspection. This is in front of you. The patient is there. Describe there what are, you said. So, there are so what you said, three. let me go through what you said, okay, because yes. one minute. You said there is a thoracotomy scar, agreed. You yes. said there are multiple sinuses, one of which is active. You didn't say that. Yes. There are multiple sinuses, but one is active at the moment. Yes, sir. There is evidence of excoriation of the skin. I agree yes. with you. What else can you see? So these are the three things you told me so far. In the active sinus, there is no uh, discharge seen, sir. The nature of discharge, okay. I cannot tell. Uh, tell me the positive I can... findings. Now, what else can you see? A few things you've missed. Which the you ribs, are, ribs are prominent. The two yeah, ribs prominent, are... so he's probably malnourished. Okay, yes, good. Sir. What else? Intercostal narrowing. Uh, okay. Intercostal narrowing and rib retraction. Uh, retraction. Okay, what else can yes. you see? What is this? What is this? What is this? They are probably <coughs> sites of uh, thoracotomy. I mean, are there, I, probably wax was attempted, then thoracotomy was done. No, 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 no. What was attempted, man? These three. Some, 
somebody with a chronic discharging sinus what do you think is attempted drain in intercostal drainage chest drains have been put in multiple chest drains chest probably drains. a seldingers mm -hmm. i don't know multiple chest drain no one two three these are all sites okay. of chest drain insertion chest drains, yes. okay you can see here also in fact this sinus is from a chest drain insertion because you can see a suture scar can you see the suture scar on the two sides yes, this is yes. also classical mm -hmm. suture scar yeah the stitch has gone in and come out from here mm -hmm. this is also probably secondary to a chest drain. this is probably yeah. a sinus at the medial end of the thoracotomy line can you see this thoracotomy line at the medial end is developed a sinus so you should be able to talk man i mean when i throw you a picture like this, this is gold mine this is gold mine so rib retraction ribs are prominent malnourished all these words must come in flowing okay all right okay somebody take this is it making sense what i'm teaching you guys or is it becoming stressful yes sir or is it becoming boring no sir making sense sir Yeah, okay, Mohammad Lamar, do you want to take it? Mohammad, are you with us? I don't know who else is there. I can't see. Who else is there with us? Is there anybody else except Mohammad Lamar? Nobody else. Okay. Are there more people on the thing? I I can't see everybody. So there are two Pesava, people. Pesava, Pesava, are you there? Or oh, Sundaram? Yes, sir. Sundaram, take this chest experiment. Just try it. Uh, Are you in a position to talk? If you are not in a position to talk, that's okay. I'll ask somebody. Sir, I'll try. Okay, go ahead. Uh, it's a chest X-ray showing a sternotomy. Uh, Sternotomy wire. So three. Okay. Good. What else? Tell me all the positive findings on this test. Okay. So sternotomy, I agree, one hundred percent. What else is there? There is. A... the right side shows uh, opacification and uh, opacification okay and air okay good what are tell me all the positive findings what else can you see is this patient in the ward seems the to be in icu is yeah he is in the icu why is you can see the it Eat it tube yeah, yeah, in the trachea and the central. Can you see that yeah. he's intubated? In the tube here, yeah. he's intubated. This guy is on a ventilator. What else can you see? Intercostal line, line, central line. The and central line on the right atrium. Intercostal line on the left side. I think if you follow this, Rall's tube. Rall's tube. Going down, down below the diaphragm. What is it? Rall's tube. Good. So that is the Rall's tube. It's not a central line. It's a Rall's tube. What else can you see? Intercostal drain on left. Ah. intercostal drain on the left side can you see the intercostal drain on the left so most important thing is intercostal drain on the left side forget the bronchopleural fissure we won't discuss it. but tell me the positive findings in any patient so this is the guy the same guy he's developed multi loculated collections he's probably had some lung surgery at the same time we don't know whether he's had a cardiac surgery or not or whether he had a lung surgery but he's got multi loculated collection on the left side if you compare the previous one to this one there is definitely been a change in the in the chest x-ray see this there is multi loculated collection it has got worse there is air trapping in this space yeah and if you follow it over a period of time a second drain has been inserted onto the left side and it's not getting better and so this guy had to go to theater somebody quickly tell me about this ct scan quickly two or three points important points uh this is a lung window so uh, lung window of ct test showing contracted left side uh, with, uh, air pocket good uh, what is this uh, air with air fluid level good uh, and uh, mediastinum shifted to the left side with okay atrophy of the right lung with the cavity in the right lung see the cavity in the right lung what else you forgot this one i'm pointing out to you. Uh, 
bronchial stump field bronchial stump yeah so there is there is some there is an air or gas in the mediastinum isn't it it's either a communication with the bronchial stump or there is infection in the area can you see this is evidence yes, of infection in the area what do you think this is looks like old heel cavity could be an old heel cavity or could be a new infection which is developing it probably may have had an aspergilloma surgery on the left side mm -hmm. and this is uh, second aspergilloma second right. aspergilloma developing on the right side okay somebody tell me about this quickly shoulder you can take it. Uh, let neeta take it neeta is on yes. neeta take it neeta are you with me or no yes sir take it Active sinus is visible on the anterior part, part of the chest above the nipple, and purulent material is coming out through it. Okay. And uh, what do you think this is? This is uh, sinus. Okay. Secondary to what? Commonest thing which causes sinus on the chest. Secondary to post sternotomy wound infection. Maybe where is the sternotomy? There is no sternotomy here. What is the commonest thing in India which causes this sort of sinus? Tuberculosis. Tuberculosis. Empire minus sinus. Yeah, this is like an empire minus sinus. If I showed you the lateral picture, which you can't see in this, but but look at the lateral profile of this patient. Look at the right side. And look mm -hmm. at the left side lateral profile. Do you think something is different? A thoracotomy scar. Yeah, there is a thoracotomy scar actually. I should have. I there is. I did have a lateral picture, but I have not shown it in this presentation. But actually, he's had a thoracotomy. If you look at the left nipple, it's overhanging. This is not overhanging, so that's okay. Tell me the CT scan quickly. Nita, you can continue. It's the same guy. This is the mediastinal window of the CT scan. Hmm. Uh, on the left side, there there is contraction. Good, very good. There's contraction of the chest. Crowding yeah. of the ribs. Crowding of the ribs. Well done. What else? And there is some calcification is visible this on one? the left side. This one? Yes. Which one? This one? Yes. Okay. All right. What else? And there is a loculation is also visible on the left lung. Where? Where? This one? Yes, sir. This is residual lung, actually. He's had a lobectomy. I'm just helping you. He's had a lobectomy. What is this? That is the empyema. Empyema. Draining sinus. Yeah. Empyema co communication. You can see the sinus. You can see the sinus. And the other thing that you can see is what is happening here. Refracture. Rib involvement. Destroy rib. What is the word I'm using? Looking. Osteomyelitis. Yeah, osteomyelitis of the ribs. Yeah, there is osteomyelitis of the ribs. So this sinus, just I resection of this. Phone. So in this patient, if you had to operate on him, if you just took away this sinus, will it heal? No, that rib has to go. No. So he needs a rib resection. And what else does he need? He need a complete uh, anti-tuberculous therapy before that. So anti-tuberculous therapy, I agree with you, but surgically, what does he need? Requires a flap also. Over there. This, this, what else is needed? Decortication. Yeah, in the chest, you got to get rid of that infection completely. So you might have to debride the chest. You might have to decorticate the chest. Even might have to do a completion pneumonectomy. And most importantly, you might need a flap for the sinus. Okay, if you find the... If you find the bronchial stump with this, uh, this thing, you have to cover the bronchial stump. And what do you cover this space with? Mm, either could be used uh, extra thoracic muscle hmm. or, a empire, or a momentum. Yeah, so you might use need not just muscle for the bronchial stump, you'll also need extra muscle to fill up this space. Yeah, so this is a big operation for this guy. <laughs> This we know. Okay, this we just go through it. So, what is the management of a chronic sinus? 
this patient comes to you in your clinic. Nita, you continue with this, okay? So this patient comes to you in your clinic. How are you going to investigate this patient? And how are you going to manage this patient? We will start with the blood investigation, complete blood count. Good. We'll see the Including DLC what? Including what? Site. Yeah. Blood count. What else will you do in the blood count? Specifically, you'll ask for? Specifically, we will see the TLC. Yeah. Then lymphocyte Anything count. Anything else? Any other investigation you'll ask for in the blood count? Specifically? Sir, ESR. ESR. Very good. You'll ask for ESR. And anything else you want to ask in an infection? Sir, uh, we'll see the C-reactive protein and pro -cal. Good. You need a CRP. You need a baseline CRP. Because you want to know whether the patient is improving or not improving over a period of time. So you need a baseline CRP. Well done. So what else will you do? Then You'll also do LFTs because you want to see for proteins. Okay, hypoproteinemia. Albumin, yes, sir. Albumin. You want to see albumin levels. Okay. Yes, what else will you do? Tell me about the investigations. Next investigation. Uh, TB for tuberculosis, TB PCR will do. Uh, maybe, maybe not. Yeah, okay. That's fine. What else will you do? The guy is in your clinic, so you've ordered the routine bloods. What else will you do? Apart from these... No, no. Look for other investigations. No, what are you going to do? This guy is in your clinic. He's sitting with you. Then chest x-ray. Good. You'll ask for a chest x-ray. Good. On the basis of the chest x-ray, what will you do? What other investigations in a thoracic case will you do? Then, and then we'll go for the CT scan. Okay, well done. What sort of CT will you ask for? Non-contrast chest X-ray. Non-contrast non chest CT. Why non-contrast and why not contrast? The so sinogram we can do with contrast. No, no, wait, 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 wait. Don't jump ahead. First, tell me, you told me non-contrast CT scan. So why will you do a non-contrast CT scan as opposed to a contrast CT scan? You said non-contrast CT scan. I didn't say it. So why will you do a non-contrast CT scan? And why not do a contrast CT scan? Better, you should be able to justify quickly. Just I would not like to contaminate the intrathoracic cavity. Oh, yeah. Will you do a contrast CT scan or will you do a non contrast CT scan? We'll do a non, non contrast initially. Uh, yeah. See the condition of the lung on both sides, see the uh, any what pathology, it, and then do a CT sinogram. Okay. So you will not do a contrast CT scan, is it? Is that what you're telling me? No, sir. At any point in the management, will you do a contrast CT scan? Sir, if there is a, any vascular structure is involved, then we'll go for a contrast CT scan. But how do you know that a vascular structure is involved or not until or unless you've done a contrast CT scan? I'll do a contrast CT. I will do a contrast CT. Why would I do a non-contrast CT? I really want to know the distortion of the mediastinum. I want to know what is happening to the vessels there. Uh, you know, is, is the infection spreading into the vessel? So I would just routinely do a contrast CT scan, not a non-contrast. Mm -hmm. I mean, the physicians do these non-contrast and HRCT and all that. As a surgeon, if you're going to manage that patient, you need to know what is the, where is the pulmonary artery? Where is the pulmonary vein? You need to know all these things, yeah? So I would do a contrast CT scan. Okay, carry on, next. What else will you do? What other investigations? Sir, should, can, we should, should we send the from culture sensitivity from that? Sinus, draining sinus. Okay, from very good. Sinus. So you swap the sinus. Well done. What else will you do? Contrast. You said sinogram. Somebody said sinogram. Mm -hmm. So what are you looking for in a sinogram? Extent of sinus, then communication of sinus. Okay, good. So extent and communication of sinus. You want to know whether it's going intrapleurally or not. Okay, so all right. Uh, what is the management for this guy? What is the principle of First, management? Diagnose of... the cause of that sinus. It is... So one is diagnose the cause, then 
what are the principles of management i'm not talking about details but just how do you control the how do you manage this guy if it is infective or if it is because of tuberculosis then we'll start att or so medical management antibiotics anti tuberculosis therapy uh, nutrition uh, rehydration nutrition and all that you build up nutrition what else so the philosophy of management is you have to drain that area you have to control the sepsis and you have to clean the area this is the philosophy of management okay this is how you think in terms of managing a patient okay so you always want to drain an area of sepsis you want a systemic control with either anti tuberculosis anti dysentery uh, and you want to debride that whole area that is the philosophy of management okay? so in in the major management is debridement of a bronchial stump closure of a bronchial stump and then filling that area with some good uh, stuff uh like omentum or muscle okay so this yeah. is how you would answer in an exam well done neeta that was correct everything you said is correct okay all right tell me about vac pump anybody has heard of vac pump in a chest wall sinus uh yes sir okay tell me a little bit about it what do you know uh it's a multi uh, uh, the uh, chest is uh, covered with the uh, um, porous material and a vacuum pressure is uh, the drain is kept over that porous, porous material and um, a continuous pressure is applied so that what is the problem with using vac pumps in the chest mm. you can use it but what are the problems you will encounter so medical... inadequate seal inadequate seal that is the commonest problem because mm -hmm. air is leaking that sponge will just fill up with air and your machine will not to function so inadequate seal that's one second thing mm, mediastinal shift mediastinal shift and number 3 vac pump in a post pneumonectomy space what is the worry it may be a nidus of infection itself uh, okay but what is your worry you are applying suction in that cavity and your mediastinum is shifting so what is the worry mediastinum mediastinum will not become stable on ever no 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 more than that common thing what is the common worry of putting suction into a cavity and increasing the suction opening of the opening of the bronchial communication so increase in the bronchial communication okay but common more common than that what is mediastinal flutter mediastinal flutter mediastinal flutter air leak what is your worry So the bleeding, Baba, bleeding from the mediastinum. Okay, pulmonary artery stump is there, and you are sucking on the pulmonary artery stump. Okay, so there's a risk of acute bleed. Yeah, does that make sense? Okay. Yes, sir. So, how do you obliterate a cavity? What are the various techniques of obliterating a cavity in the chest? Management. Uh, phrenic crush. Inf infected or non infected 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 we are talking about an infected okay. so the uh, muscle muscle flap muscle flap friend friend what is the common operation first common operation people do windows and uh, illocer flap illocer flap and pleurocutaneous flap windows and illocer flap okay and then you have the option of doing muscular or mental flaps or you can do a thoracoplasty tell me philosophy principles of thoracoplasty to uh, obliterate the residual space so that and bring the chest wall to to the collapsed lung okay how do you do it uh there is partial thoracoplasty uh, total thoracoplasty total thoracoplasty we excise the uh, ribs entire ribs from anterior to posterior from second to the 11th and uh, co bring the uh, collapse the chest wall onto the collapsed lung yeah but what layer at what layer do you excise the rib you have to talk about that that is very important a uh, complete uh, along with periosteum complete resection of the rib along with the periosteum no, no it's a sub periosteal excision no? you you incise on the periosteum and take the whole rib down and let the whole thick sub periosteal oh, muscle okay. fall down no it's a sub periosteal sub periosteal not a periosteum okay so you never take out the periosteum in fact you make an incision on the periosteum and bare the rib from front to back and then cut it on the two sides so it's always a sub periosteal resection okay all right and it can be complete or it can be uh, incomplete what are the levels that you can do which is the one you don't want to take out 
first trip first trip and you try and you try and stay away from the first trip so two down to whatever number you need you can do okay tell me a little bit about bronchoscopic management how do you manage bronchopleural fistulas by bronchoscopy by the way neeta in your patient you forgot to tell me about bronchoscopy okay i would always do bronchoscopy and i would always do a bronchial lavage for tuberculosis yeah, yeah? Okay. So tell me bronchoscopic management for patient the bronchoscopy is used for diagnostic as well as therapeutic purpose okay. tell me therapeutic management what what are the options available to you so um glue placement spigot glue. okay one is spigot number two is glue okay. one way bronchial valve well. spigot uh, are it why do you put a spigot where do you put a spigot in the bronchus uh, communicating the bronchus, bronchus not in the fistula okay so you don't place the spigot in the fistula you place it in the bronchus proximal to the fistula why uh, how will that help uh it uh, creates a negative pressure distally so that the bronchus collapse yeah so there is collapse of the distal bronchus and then what happens and then then why are you putting a spigot that's what i'm asking to protect the opposite lung of the so one is to material. prevent contamination cross contamination i completely agree with you and what is the second philosophy you said you want to collapse why do you want to collapse that area uh, to give uh, so that the fistula heals yeah Temper so that the fist the two edges of the fistula will come uh, one against the other no the reason why the fistula is not healing is because air is keeping that fistula patent okay it is keeping the fistula open and when you put a spigot you prevent air from going into that area so because air does not go into that area the fistula collapses and the anterior and the posterior surface of the fistula meet and so you leave it there for 6 to 8 weeks for it to heal so healing will be possible did you understand that philosophy yes sir yes or no hello okay what else what else is available to you in, in instead of spigot what else is available to you tissue glue Valve. Okay. okay. Yeah. End of bronchial valve. valve. Very good. End of bronchial valve. Yeah. Good. So this is all anecdotal. Small fistula. You can usually done uh, bronchoscopic management is only for small fistula. Okay. And the recurrence is very high. And the options are you can either use glue, which can be either tissue or cyanoacrylate glue, and uh, and and then you can use uh, a spigot. You can use a you can use a what do you call it? A end of bronchial valve. Okay. So somebody describe a Claggett's window. How do you make a Claggett's window? Nikhil, you describe it. No, RFS finishes exam. You describe me. How do you make a Claggett's window? Uh, sir, uh, small incision or uh, uh, at a thoracotomy line, and uh, one uh, three uh, ribs, con three consecutive ribs partially resected, and uh, mm, pleura is. Uh, What yeah. is the philosophy of Claggett's window? So the continue uh, continuous drainage will provide uh, uh, continuous irrigation of the cavity uh, with not irrigation. It's drainage. You were right about drainage. But where do you make the Claggett's window? You make it at the bottom. top of the chest or bottom of the chest? Bottom dependent side. Bottom of the Thank chest. Thank you very much. So the word you have to use is incision is always made onto the dependent area. Okay. Mm -hmm. and you make a, this sort of an incision and then you excise one or two ribs maybe three ribs depending on what is the thing and you allow continuous drainage with a colostomy bag around it okay all right so this is what you do yes. and then you cut the rib and then you clean out as much as you can what do you do to the edges sir uh, parietal pleura is approximated to the skin okay so you make you want to thin fold the edges okay so that you have a continuous drainage system All right. This is how a Claggett window looks. Now, uh, Vikas. Yes, sir. Short case. So uh, we can we can see we can see uh, 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 there is a uh, large window in the lateral aspect of the chest, just below the nipple. 
this is the head end no sir on the this side uh, this this is head this is head this okay. is so this is lateral lateral aspect of the left chest uh, appears to be a claggett window uh, skin edges are sutured to the end of the we can see uh, pleural material inside and uh, granulomatous granulomatous tissue in uh, granulomatous tissue on the inside of the cavity uh, what about this the edges edges are slightly erythematous and inflamed what is the word inflamed edges yeah inflamed is the word what is the word excoriation of the skin okay excoriation of the skin so there is excoriation of the skin with evidence of healing excoriation this is excoriation no this is excoriation okay, yes. of healing so use the word you know it's a good word to use okay uh, nickel short case uh, sir uh, this is a, a, a post uh, post thoracotomy pleurocutaneous uh, fistula uh, showing excoriation of the skin and um, with what is the gender what is the gender of this patient female female patient so you must tell me that okay. short case no just describe everything that you can see Okay. Yes. Do you think this is a weight patient or? Yeah, no, sir, intubated patient. Yeah, it's probably introp. No, you can see all these Inter things. Probably being operated upon. Okay, so you can see yes. large amount of excoriation. You can see uh, this uh, window. Okay. All right. Uh, so, what is the management? It's always a combined surgical. In in the exam, it's always good to say you do a combined surgical. Okay. So you do the thoracic surgeon will take away the sinus, will do all the deprivement, will complete any lung resection that is left over, close the stump, and then the plastic surgeon will take the flaps. Okay. So now I want you to say this for me, Nikhil, in the exam hmm. management of this. Tell me the four or five steps that you do quickly. What I just showed you. So uh, philosophy of management. Deprivement, control of sepsis. Mm. closure of closure of fistula and uh, re, uh, and uh, filling the cavity with the myocutaneous flap okay so you will do sinus removal and debridement right me you will complete any lung resection if need be and you will close the stump okay that is most important yes. and then what flaps can you use for the stump sinus uh, sir intercostal muscle flap uh, same side pectoralis major or uh serratus anterior flap through the second intercostal space uh then um, abdominal muscles uh, sir, uh rectus abdominis or external what is that flap what is that flap called as rectus abdominis if you use what is it tram 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 okay what else so phrenic nerve sometimes you can take a flap of diaphragm and swing it around sometimes you can take a thymus and put it in okay all of these can be used okay So thoracic surgeon will do rib resection to maximum margin. Wow, what is the reason? Why do you need to do rib resection to maximum margin? Uh, Sir, so the so that the uh, cavity uh, is dimension of cavity is decreased. No, no, rib resection will increase the dimension of the cavity. Why do you do rib resection? to remove all the infected material entire infected yeah. bone so that no osteomyelitic rib is left behind okay mm -hmm. so the key thing the word to use is osteomyelitic rib you do not want to leave any osteomyelitic rib in the area mm -hmm. why sir so it will be a uh, reason for chronic infection and failure of surgery so how do you know that you have cut up to the margin of uh, uh, non osteomyelitic rib what will happen that will tell you that you have cut up to the correct level bleeding bleeding you are absolutely right you want bleeding to happen when you are cutting the rib you have to keep cutting up distally till it bleeds and when it bleeds freely you know this is healthy mass okay will you use a mesh to cover the area so since it is infectious will not never use a prosthetic material okay never use a mesh or prosthetic You'll be surprised the number of times people say in the exam you'll use a mesh. 
okay don't say that so okay plastic surgeon will do what he will take a vascularized muscle graft he'll do the reconstruction and do you want primary closure or you want secondary closure uh, uh so primary closure always preferably primary closure okay always preferably it's important to close the skin okay all right uh, so what are the muscle flaps we said latissimus dorsi pectoralis major serratus anterior rectus abdominis well done you gave me all of the answers correctly so this is fine let's so we'll talk about a bit later this is good now this guy uh see uh, neeta come back in you were talking about this guy no neeta yes. are you still with us yes okay so same this is your short case and this is what i showed you now so tell me what you see so first you told me there is a sinus with some pus there which i agree with you this is the lateral view of the same guy Yes, sir. What? Talk about it. Short case in the exam. Talk about it. Anterolateral part of the chest. There is one sinus is visible. Okay. And there is retraction of the chest. Um, that uh, chest part. Yeah. What else? and there is pus like material looks like pus like material is coming out through it okay what else at the level of nipple what else uh, surrounding skin is looking quite healthy there is a scar is also visible thoracotomy scar how many scars can you see two scar is visible two scar he has had more than one surgery on the chest wall can you see that there is one scar going all the way here there's another scar going here can you see that so he has had multiple attempts to repair this what else do you think has happened why is this collapsed inside can you see do you agree that this is collapsed yes sir what surgery has been done uh, primary thoracoplasty partial thoracotomy has been done No, no. Actually, he had a partial thoracoplasty done. Actually, yeah. You can say it's a healed uh, window. You could call it a healed window, but actually, I know this patient, so I know that he actually had multiple attempts at partial thoracoplasty. Okay, all right. Now go on talking. Same guy. So now, uh, Nita, it's still your patient, and this is the back. Posterior lateral thoracotomy scar. Incision mark is visible on the back side. Oh, and what else is visible? You saw one scar in the lateral view. You saw one and two scars, right? Yes, sir. You saw one and two scars, yes, right? Yes, sir. What else is there? Is the third scar. There is a third scar. Is another attempt at trying to close it. Can you see that? Yes, sir. Yeah. So he's got many scars. One, two, and three. So now this is the same guy, your patient. This is his chest X-ray. Describe it to me. Describe this one, this chest X-ray. This is a PA view of chest X-ray. Right side is uh, looks normal. On the left oh. side, there oh. is collapse. Oh. Why is there a collapse? Why is there a collapse on the left side? Retraction of the chest wall. And what else? We just said he's had some surgery. You no, know? what surgery has he had? Thoracic partial thoracoplasty. Yeah, he's had thoracoplasty. You can see that the ribs are all removed here, so this is collapsed out. Yeah. Okay. the scar this is him same thing you see some of the ribs have been cut can you see this rib is short here yes sir yeah yes, so sir. there is some ribs have been cut and it's collapsed down attempt have been made in the past to collapse the rib okay and he's also got osteomyelitis in the first rib this is the first rib can you see that yes so he's got osteomyelitis in the first rib and he's got osteomyelitis in the seventh rib okay so if i have not shown you continue so he's got multiple sinuses you saw one sinus in the 
anterior chest wall one sinus on the lateral chest wall yeah agreed or not so there is osteomyelitis lower down see this sinus and see this sinus okay one sinus and two sinus can you see that so what is classical what has multiple sinuses and multiple openings what disease pathology tuberculosis most common tuberculosis very good tuberculosis that's correct how do you track the sinus intraoperatively when you are operating how will you make sure you can find the track of the sinus strategies available to track will do sinogram is pre operative i agree with you but on table how do you know that you are following the track methylene blue will put in good so one is you can inject it with methylene blue what else can you do probe follow the track how do you do yaarif you are saying something kya yeah, put a probe yeah, soft probe yeah. soft probe so you put in a soft probe inside okay and leave it in there and then just feel for the probe and cut around the sinus okay so you harvest when you are going there you harvest whatever is left over you have to follow all tracks to the bone okay it's not just one track every track has to be followed to the bone and then you got to resect everything including the bone okay and then once you have resected everything including the bone then you get the muscle in this is the sinus can you see this soft thing probe so this is multiple probes multiple tracks yeah the whole track and sinus has been removed <coughs> and then you primarily close it okay and now you can see that sinus is gone yeah there was one sinus here there was another sinus here and it is completely healed can you see that yes sir we have also used omentum in this patient so we have taken no we have not used omentum in this patient we just used the chest wall muscle and we managed to close it can you see that everything is closed now all the sinuses is healed and there's nothing Okay. Sir, Tell for the about, first rib osteomyelitis, what was done, sir? We actually went in and debrided the first rib. Anteriorly, we we did a anterior. See this incision. So there was a large incision here, and it lifted the whole flap and chopped off the first rib inside there. So the flap was down here where the sinus is, but we followed the sinus all the way up to the first rib, and we chopped off the first rib. And the rib was excised. First. Not the whole rib, but part of the rib was excised. below the clavicle okay so tell me what are the other ways to manage a chronic bron uh, sinus from the left main bronchus how do you access the left main bronchus sinus a bronchopleural fistula not sinus a left main bronchus bronchopleural fistula what are the approaches to a left main bronchopleural fistula sir uh, mm, thoracotomy And so lateral thoracotomy uh what is posterior lateral thoracotomy how else can trans, you trans trans transternal transpericardial approach okay so tell me about this transternal transpericardial approach uh sir uh, sternotomy pericardium is open push toward the right sling the aorta and push is this on brachiocephalic uh, vein Left yeah. brachiocephalic vein, and, uh, push laterally and uh, uh, SVC is pushed towards the right side and brachiocephalic towards the um, uh, uh, towards the uh, cranially. Oh. You, and you can uh, uh, push the pulmonary artery down, or you uh, oh. of right side you can re-divide the pulmonary artery, and you are straight in uh, in front of the bronchus. So you are dividing the pulmonary artery. Again, because he's already had a pneumonectomy, and then what you do? And then, then you open the peri, open the posterior pericardium. Pericardium. Once you open the posterior pericardium, you are at the carina. Okay. Carina. Yeah, you've gone through, and you are at the carina. That's where you identify the stump of the bronchus, and then you re-staple. Can you see that this is for the right side? He's doing it. So you re-staple the bronchial stump. So this is a transternal. transpericardial the aorta has moved to one side the svc and the brachiocephalic is moved away you have opened the posterior pericardium you have restapled the uh, right pulmonary artery and then you see the carina and then you take the carina and come proximally near a healthy area and then you staple it okay all right it's good uh, what are philosophies of omentoplasty how do you do omentoplasty how do you harvest the omentum Mm. 
Trans diaphragmatic. Trans diaphragmatic. Trans diaphragmatic. No, actually, you do a laparotomy. No, first. Lepidotomy. Either you do a laparotomy or you do laparoscopy and you harvest the momentum. And then you make a tunnel, trans diaphragmatic or sub diaphragmatic, and then swing it into the chest. Okay. So this is your thing. You have to make sure that you leave the uh, right gastroepiploid artery for the stomach. And then you cut across and swing this whole thing on the left gastroepiploid. Okay. And so you swing it around. You can either swing it on the left or the right, depends on what you want. So you can take it either on the left base or the right base and recreate a long thing. And then you tunnel it trans diaphragmatically and bring it into the chest. Okay. And then once it comes into the chest, the important thing is you must close this. Otherwise, you'll get herniation. Okay. So it's very important that you close this area. Otherwise, the whole abdominal content will herniate. And then you place it, either you can place it on the stump that you see here, or you can place it into the empty cavity. And then you fill it all up. Fill up the whole space. Okay? All right. So this is one of my patients who had a claggett window and lots of things with an osteosarcoma. So here we have done complete resection of the rib. We have re-resected the whole rib. He was an Ewing's osteosarcoma. We have done uh, the whole thing. And then we've gone into the abdomen, taken this thing, and swung it around through a subcutaneous tunnel and brought it into this side and then placed it over the thing. And then I always like to do primary closure, okay? Always like to do primary closure. And so this is post-operative clean. And look at the guy. So this is it. This is it. And it's all gone. He came with a large climate window, but it is all sorted. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. Any other questions you want to ask me? This is the same lady that I showed you. Yeah. Again, we have done a large, uh, you know, we, what we do is in this lady, I'll just give you an example, because the problem is when you make a thoracotomy and go inside, it's very difficult to find the bronchopleural fistula. Okay. Because it's all fibrotic and very, very densely adherent. And you cannot dissect into that area because you don't know where the pulmonary artery is come. So what you should do is you should do a bronchoscopy on the, with the patient lateral and then put a guide wire across the stump under vision. And so when you come and do a thoracotomy, you find the guide wire. And that helps you to identify where the bronchial stump is. Okay? So remember to say this step in the management that I would always do a bronchoscopy, pass a guide wire across the stump so that when I turn laterally and do a thoracotomy, the guide wire tells me where exactly is the fistula. It's very difficult to find the fistula. And then you do all these muscle flaps and then you close it, yeah? And then that's the closure. All things are in there. And this is the same patient, okay? Can you see that? Can you remember the horrible picture before? This is her, okay? For five years, she was running around with this sort of life. And the sad part is this lady is a doctor, okay? And for five years, she was running around with this sort of thing. And, uh, you know, we did this and this is her. And she's, I know she's recently finished her postgraduate MD medicine. Uh, and, and she's now got, see, this is before and this is after. But you've got to be very, very aggressive. You've got to deprive everything, everything. You've got to deprive everything so that the whole thing gets completely cleared. And look at the skin. Now it is beautifully healed. Look at this kid. Horrible five years. From first MBBS to final year MBBS, she lived her life like this. And look at her now. She is now doing postgraduate MD medicine. Yeah? So a great success story. Okay. Thanks, guys. Any more questions? Are you happy? Yes. Let me just stop. Yes, sir. Sir, for uh, 